I cannot tell you how much I would love to have either this intro or the outro be some super dynamic final fusion shot with them all coming in around Gygar, but um, this this is the only action base I currently have that isn't in use by one of my kits on my shelves, so uh, that's unfortunately not happening. Hello and welcome back to another Plomo review. Today we're taking a look at a big one. The real grade King of Braves, Gao Gaigar. Now starting out the review. Since Galgagar is such a different beast compared to pretty much everything else I've ever reviewed, let's just go through things in sort of chronological order. Starting off with the Gao Machines, and with the one with the least amount to talk about, Stealth Gao. Since, since it's a stealth wing, it, it doesn't really do anything in this mode. Uh, it looks pretty, it looks very nice. They did a great job with it. But there's not really anything to talk about since literally all the gimmicks are in, well, the final form. <laughs> Though I will point out that all of these actually have cockpits in here, it's just that this is such smoky black glass that you can't even see it. Next up, Liner Gao, which has almost nothing to talk about. I mean, it, it has articulation in the wheels, technically. I mean, they're... They're so stiff they don't even move on mine anyway, but the, it, it does technically have articulation there. I think the more important thing is that this thing does a really good job of not needing much paint. The gray in the center here and then the gray sort of around the wheels, not this piece but in here. I did paint that just to sort of give a little, to give it a little bit more like continuity on the underside, though I mean you can still see the Gagagar's uh, biceps pretty obviously there. I just want to point out, these are actually on the same runner as the hands uh, that we'll be talking about later because they're impressive. Cockpit's in here too, but obviously you can't see it. This is actually two-tone, translucent for the windows and then black, and it's all molded together, which looks beautiful. It's very subtle, but it looks great. These are molded in translucent yellow. I had to put some silver in behind them so that they pop a little bit better. All of this along here, including these little ones, are 3D stickers. I do appreciate it because it looks great. Blue doesn't catch the light as much as the one on the top, but it is still the same shade of blue, which is nice. And the 3D windows look really good. Like, I'm genuinely really impressed by that. I was not expecting the little ones that sit in here, but it, it adds a lot to it. It sort of keeps continuity between all the windows and just... Looks good. I do wish these gaps for the shoulders, uh closed up a little better on mine. There's, there's always a little bit of a gap there, but it, it it's fine. Next up we have Drill Gao. Which, again, there are cockpits in there, but yeah, good luck. 
these can actually turn. They're on pegs. They're not free moving, but they, they can turn. More importantly, though, these treads are all individual pieces. These, these are real working treads, which is super impressive. They're ABS, so the nubs along the side are... I mean, you can see them now. I used gun marker to hide the stress on them, but man, the... Yeah, you're never getting rid of those nubs. Thankfully, it's just treads, so you really can't see it anyway. Gee, I wonder what this turns into. Yeah, these kind of just stick out the back. Finally, you have the main Gao machine, which isn't technically a Gao machine, but... Galleon, which just looks beautiful. I will say now, the, the gold is painted, just... <laughs> Just to not give you a uh, false impression, the, I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute, but yeah. And this one actually is articulated, so we'll go over it quickly. Mouth can open and close fully. You can kind of tilt the head side to side a little bit to give it a little bit of expressiveness. Not, not great, but I mean, it, it, better than nothing, I suppose. Front legs are just... Obviously, Gygar's arms, so they have all the same articulation that those have, so we'll go into that in a bit. Back legs are also blatantly Gygar's legs, but uh, you, you don't really get much articulation out of them. You get the double joint at the knee for a little bit of front and back. Ankles basically useless, to be honest. And the tail is uh, on a couple of hinges, which is nice. Yeah, th this isn't a super articulated thing, but it can still get some nice poses, at least. Also, I do want to point out the blue on those lights on the side. That That is paint. It's just gray plastic. Uh, they do give you stickers for it. Uh, they give you stickers for all the color correction on this, but I, I did just paint them because I preferred this color. Now... Time for fusion. This does technically have a perfect transformation. In fact, the only pieces on this entire thing that have to be removed for any transformation are just the caps here, <laughs> which is a very impressive thing. Anyway, things first. I want to make sure that this is pulled down. Then. Fold this in. Bring these out. Flip this up. Rotate it. Open the mouth. <laughs> bring this down. Make sure it's up all the way. Bring these back in and bring this back up. Then rotate. Rotate. Fold. They say to just leave these this way, but I think it looks much better if you rotate them. It doesn't affect anything either way, but yeah, you can agree that looks better. <laughs> legs down, fold this whole section up, flip in the tail, you actually want to bring these up <laughs> into the back skirt, well the now back skirt, and bring all that back down, extend the shins out, rotate at the waist, <laughs> the arms down, you have Geiger. And there's a slight problem. Uh, the feet don't want to stay flush. Uh, Baldrins can go in a little bit further than they should, which was part of the engineering, but it does mean that the legs don't really like to sit flat in a way that actually lets them stand up properly. Hey, Geiger looks really good. This thing has a stupid amount of articulation. The head is on a barbell joint. So no limitation to the articulation there at all. The shoulder joint is, um, frankly ridiculous. It's on an accordion hinge here. It's a peg here and a peg here. So it comes forward on that out. Then there's a hinge up here. <laughs> as well as a rotation at the top of that. Then all of this is on just 
hinges so that <laughs> this can get out of the way of the actual arm coming out to the side. Obviously, as you saw with the transformation, there's a bicep rotation, but there's also a double jointed elbow for a full bend. And not only is the hand on a ball joint, but the paw is also on a ball joint. So you get ridiculous range there. This is ridiculous too. <laughs> there's an accordion double hinge, just like the shoulder, this way on <laughs> the waist which also has a hinge at the bottom of it, so you get a stupid ab crunch, ridiculous ab crunch to the back even. Like, when you suffer the transformation, there's a waist rotation, but then there's a hinge side to side at the bottom there too. This aren't crazy. A uh, locking mechanism here that lets you shift them down individually, like a master grade. So you can get really high kicks out of this thing that is uh meant to lock for gal guy car to bring these down a little bit but again we'll get into that shortly double jointed knee for a pretty much full bend i mean that's that's good enough isn't it i said the ankle is a little bit on the useless side but there is a ball joint in there it's just nothing crazy though the uh the toe can actually rock very slightly side to side, which I, I feels like it's intentional because of the shaping here, but it, it also kind of feels like it's just mismolded. Yeah, the only real complaint I have about this is that pretty much everything is just split right up the middle, so you get some gaps there, but it doesn't look bad or anything. And now we can go over the paint on this since it's in a slightly better mode. Well, uh, it, those orange triangles just like the ones up here. They do have stickers, but I'm going to recommend painting them to actually color match the claws, because the stickers are a little bit more key orange than they should be. Now, obviously, all that gold is painted, but the only thing here that need, that isn't, like, color separated from parts is the black trim around Galleon's eyes, which is insane. Here, the only thing that I've done is, uh, done a marker in the vents on the head and the bottom of the nose and the mouth, if it wants to act... Whoa, what just happened? That was weird. All the white is, uh... Apparently really affecting my camera. The black around the eyes, because the orange is actually color-separated, and uh, it's raised, so it's really easy. Again, you don't have to paint anything. You can just use the ridiculous sticker sheet, which we'll get into in a second. And also the uh, head camera. The orange on this is not part separated, which they could have easily made part separated. They could have just made a part of this and just shoot up through there, but whatever. Gem on the head separated, so I'll accept it. <laughs> Quite done yet, because you get dynamic hands, specifically Final Fusion dynamic hands, but oh man, I'm happy. <laughs> no holding hands in this mode, but I mean, I'll take it. Into the final fusion, I do, I do just want to quickly show what the actual plastics for the uh, different golds look like. This is for the sort of center section on Galleon's face is, and it's um, it's just kind of yellow to be honest. It, it's gross. It's a, it's an ugly color. I don't like it. The other parts are less bad. It's more of just a mac and cheese, but. It's it's still not great. There's there's a reason I I said to paint it because um, slight color difference there. <laughs> I mean honestly I could probably use a translucent yellow coat over what the gold I used was, but it still looks a lot better. <laughs> anyway, you'd think it's time for Final Fusion, but not quite yet. There is the thing that it did do like once in the show where you can bring in drill gal split it flip up this <laughs> and it just sort of clips on to the arm it's come on yeah it's silly you can do it with both it it's silly. <laughs> There's a reason it was barely used. This is very much a, a toy 
Toyetic thing. It, it's funny. I like the fact that they include it. It's not super necessary. Something that's a bit cooler, though, is you can actually bring this in and, uh, yeah. Fold this down. Fold these down. You can actually plug Stealth Gal on to the back, which it also does. And you can do both of those at the same time if you want to make something absolutely stupid, but I appreciate the option. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave that out for now. These don't need to be down, though. Now, Final Fusion. Final Fusion! Sorry! Okay. Final Fusion! Program! I do want to point out they do tell you to uh, sort of get your nail in there and separate these sections out, but they, they don't stay out anyway, so just just leave it. And here comes the worst part of the entire transformation, getting these up around the arms. Remember to pull these out. Anyway, be very careful with the faceplate on this because it's tiny little... Now, to be fair, it's intentional, so you can have it without this faceplate on, which is neat. But, um, yeah, just be careful. Suini. <laughs> And most of the articulation is the same. I now have to brace this because on my copy it doesn't want to lock in. But front skirt and side skirt are attached, obviously, but that's that's not bad. <laughs> and you do still get um, 90 degrees at the knee, which is impressive. You want to be a little bit careful when messing with that, just so that you don't uh, overexert anything. The waist is completely unimpeded, because this is all attached up onto the torso. I mean, you can't go quite far back just because of that, but everything else still works. You even still get the waist rotation, so I mean, that's fine. Head, since this is attached with wires, this is pretty much completely uninhibited. You can still turn the head pretty far to either side. You do have to make sure that the helmet stays on properly, because otherwise the uh, eyes sort of sink down into the head a little bit. But the fact that it is still articulated at all is impressive. And the shoulders... Um, now, obviously, you do have to keep in mind all of this, but <laughs> because of the hell in heaven, which we'll get into in a little bit, these are articulated, so you can actually get the arms out front, but there's a sliding joint in the middle of liner gal that lets them pull out further. Then there's a hinge, a rotation, and then another hinge out. And of course you do get a bicep swivel and a double jointed elbow for a full pen, despite how bulky that is. And the hands, which are on a ball joint and a uh, hinge front to back, and up and down slightly, and then all of these are individually jointed. Ball joint, hinge, hinge, hinge. Fully, properly articulated hands, and there's even a mid-hand hinge. This thing is ridiculously well articulated, and these are pre-molded, and everybody says they shatter on them. Now, I gently worked in the joints, and uh, I'll be honest, I'm probably going to pull this off. <laughs> I may not even show it off, 
because uh, I'm, I'm deathly afraid of breaking these hands. I'm going to be displaying it on my shelf with the Hell in Heaven pose anyway, so I'm not going to be using them, but um, these are a beautiful feat of engineering. Unfortunately, they're a little bit on the fragile side. That said, this is a beautiful kit. You have the G-Stone sculpted in. I actually painted uh, silver in the recessed piece and then black over the rest of it so it sticks out in there. It's so pretty. It's no new paint to go over since nothing's actually really revealed aside from that. And that's all fully color separated. But, I mean, just... Just look at that. Now, the only thing I really want to warn you about is the way that the ankles are done on this because of, you know, the whole mechanism of this. It's just a peg stuck in here with a hinge. And that peg is not the tightest thing in the world. So, just, you know, make sure it doesn't accidentally fall over. And you see what I mean about the extra width on these thighs not being necessary at all. It, it does not need it. I am slightly annoyed that this doesn't seem to want to stay clicked in when they're down, but, uh, you know, just, just brace it like this, I guess, and it should be fine. <laughs> right, now, before we get into the accessories for Galgaigar properly, I do want to finally show off the real grade sticker sheet. Because there's a stupid amount of stuff. I mean, these these are the black around Galleon's eyes. You get three different options for Galkaikar's eyes. You get the camera pieces. Those are the triangles that go on it. And then these are the cameras for Drill Gao. And this, there's just so much crap here that I just... I cannot be bothered to add any of it. Because I actually really like the show-accurate look. Where it's not loaded down with warning stickers. Yeah, this is the... Uh, Liner Gal 3D sticker sheet too, I just threw that in here earlier, but yeah, I I know it's a personal preference, but I don't know why someone would ruin a perfectly good Gal Guy Gar by covering it in warning stickers. I mean eh. Now the thing I was absolutely terrified about uh posing the hand for is you do get a really nice looking protect shade. Solid translucent plastic for uh the main center, but this is printed onto a clear sheet. Probably the best protect shade they've ever made. You have to fold the hand up into the this pose to slot it into <laughs> put the fingers through that gap and it's, it works. Um, I really don't even want to try it on camera because I'm afraid I'm going to break something. But you know, just just imagine that being held out in front of it. Part looks great. So I mean. Good, good enough. Forgive me for not wanting to break the kit. Knowing my track record, it would happen. However, something I'm a little less worried about, you do get a dividing driver. I wish I could have gotten Goldie Marg, but that was the Bandai and drastically overpriced, so just stuck with this. <laughs> now, uh, all the stuff here that's silver, metal, which is awesome. I did paint some sort of chrome steel silver a uh, Vallejo metallic medium <laughs> over black in behind this just to get that shine and yeah that's nice but everything else is just bare and there's actually a gimmick a little spring in here so that it actually compresses very slightly which is accurate but it does feel like it should go in further <laughs> just personal preference anyway this does just clip directly on over here and there's enough of a gap in here that you can just slide it directly over. It just plugs onto the arm like that. Completely fine. Oop. <laughs> I hit the camera. Squeeze his past. And that that's never going to fit into frame. But it looks real nice. Alright, let's, uh, let's get that off. And for the final gimmick, or... Er, feature, accessory, whatever, I am actually going to remove both of these articulated hands, because thank god the hell in heaven hands are- my camera stand just broke. <laughs> Fun. Uh, I repaired it, but that was annoying. Anyway, yeah, the- you see a little bit better. For the uh, protect shade, you literally bend this all the way up, which is kind of why I don't want to try it, but you can also bend this in and out. 
And like I said, these are all fully articulated and ball jointed at the bases, so you get pretty much full articulation out of these, which is nice. Just terrifyingly delicate. Anyway, yeah, Hell in Heaven. I, I will point out I did paint this. Uh, the fingers are gray plastic, which doesn't match the articulated hands, which are black. I think the gray hand, gray fingers is actually accurate, but I'm not painting articulated parts. So I decided to dry brush some green onto these to sort of emulate the look of the green G-stone energy emanating from it. Anyway, for this, you do want to fully extend out, wiggle, 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 this joint so that it's uh, like that on both sides, all the way out. You want to rotate the arms up, and then these parts are ball jointed and hinged, so they get fully out of the way of the arm. You gotta do a little bit of mass shifting to actually do this. <laughs> Unfortunately, you just gotta cheese it sometimes. Anyway, the hands do just plug in right where the articulated ones were. Same ball joint. Probably gonna want to bend these back out so it looks a little bit less silly. And then just stand it up doing the Hell in Heaven pose, which it does very well. Like I said, this is how I'm going to be displaying mine, specifically because it looks so good. And also I won't have to worry about the hands breaking on me. But that that's a bonus, honestly. This just looks amazing. And there is one final thing to talk about, and that is the exhaust vents back here. Which move connected, which is nice. And um, it's gray plastic in there. I, I painted them up with some silver and bright orange so that it uh, looks like the heat exhaust because you can't see them otherwise, and th this looks great. <laughs> I will say that, like the in-universe counterpart, it is actually much harder to transform this back <laughs> after the final fusion. These pieces especially are very annoying to get out enough to actually get these in. And before we wrap this up, you get two of these just because of how the uh, runners are laid out, but this is just a action base adapter for Stealth Gal. You just clip this onto the fins in the middle of the back and lets it stand up on an action base. You also do get these pieces. This is just so you can strap Liner Gal onto the bottom of Stealth Gal, which is, um, I think that happens like once. <laughs> nice to be included, but it, it's a little bit superfluous. This, on the other hand, is so you can put the broken magnum up on an action base. Plug this into the back of the fist, the 3mm peg. And this is an action base adapter for Gygar slash Gal Gygar. Clips into the same place on in both modes, just plugs right into the crotch. Big 5mm peg sticking off that so you don't really have to worry about it falling. Since this whole review has been kind of unorthodox, I figured might as well do the size comparisons a little bit differently too and show off the size of everything in every mode Times like these, I wish I had a bigger cutting mat. Now, as for a quick size comparison for Gygar, it's pretty tall. It's almost the size of the new Gundam. Like it's it's around the size of the high grade. It's quite a bit bigger than the RX-78, though. And as for a size comparison for Gal Gygar itself. Um, yeah, it's a little on the big side. <laughs> it's not quite Master Grade size. It's it's like a halfway between Master Grade and High Grade. It's it's around the size of the High Grade Sasabi, but like obviously the wings are massive. But the main mass of the body, not including Stealth Gal's wings, is around the size of the Sasabi. 
it is apparently accurate 1144 scale, though. Uh, <laughs> which makes me realize how absurdly massive that stealth wing is. Not including, you know, Drill Gal, because that's a fantasy thing anyway, but uh, Liner Gal is not actually that far off accurate size. It's just <laughs> the others are massive. So, to wrap this review up, the real grade Gal Gygar is excellent. It does everything you want out of a Gal Gygar. Pretty much perfect articulation, pretty much perfect transformation. Color correction's basically non existent. It has a lot of interesting little things and gimmicks going on with it. it has fully articulated hands for Gal Gygar. Comes with two sets of hands for Gygar. It, it's pretty much perfect. The only thing is you have to paint the gold, because the plastic is kind of gross, but hey, if you like that color, don't even bother, it's fine. No detail painting needs to be done, because it comes with stickers for all of it. Hell, I used like half of the good stickers on this anyway. Denliner especially, use those 3D stickers, I, I fully endorse those. They should use them pretty much from now on whenever they need to do something like this. They worked on Dragonar, they worked on Bifom, they work exceptionally well here. I'm glad this came with the Dividing Driver. I'm impressed that it used real metal. I can't help but feel like that may have driven up the price a little bit, but I'll take it because it's cool. Even if I don't plan on displaying it with it, it's a really nice inclusion. And aside from those delicate hands, I'm not too worried about anything on this braking. It seems pretty well engineered when it comes to the joints not, you know. <laughs> if you're familiar with other real grades, you might know what I'm talking about. Nothing is too over-engineered on this. If you like Gal Gygar or you're looking for something different from your usual gunpla, buy this. Be careful with the hands, but buy this. This is a really good kit. You will not be disappointed. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. Subscribe and hit the bell to be alerted for future reviews. Come chill in the Discord. Follow me on Twitter, if that's even still around. And consider supporting me on Patreon, so I can keep bringing you videos like this. And, as always, until next time, happy building.